Thank you, um, Mrs. K, Pastor Mrs. K. Good morning. Good morning. Have we all been fasting? Uh, I think so, yeah? Um, so I'm back, and um, I thank God for giving me this opportunity. Uh, first, I want to just acknowledge and honor um, uh, the leadership that is uh, uh, Pastor Kevin and Faith and the entire Mavuno leadership and even Mavuno downtown uh, for even giving me an opportunity to come and share God's word with you um, for these two um, uh, Sundays. Um, it has been um, a good week. It was a week of resuming. Um, we resumed the morning prayers and um, the three hour of prayer we did. Um, we've been on a seven day fast and we have been, we also had a family uh, night on Wednesday. How many managed to get to the family night? Good, 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 good great. Give a, um, a clap for yourself for resuming. Great. So we started off um, a sermon series uh, titled Hanging by a Thread. What do you do when you get to the end of your rope? And that's what we started last week. And last week, we had a sermon titled To the Last Drop. So the, what we were looking at is what do we do when everything seems it has come to an end. And we were able to look at that um, uh, through the story of Elisha and a lady who uh, had um, her jars filled up by faith. So today we move on to um, the second week of our sermon, or of our series. And today's sermon is titled, No Go Zones. And so, you know, when you hear no-go zones, it sounds like it's a very serious sermon, isn't it? I promise you it's, it's, okay, it's serious, but it's not that serious, okay? So I want to engage you like it is. We always want to engage um, each other and just help uh, the preacher to preach. And so we have a question of the day. And the question of the day today is what thing have you prayed for or even wished that God would do, but has or did not happen. You prayed, you fasted, you trusted God, but it did not happen. Share with your neighbor. What is that? What is the one thing? Yeah, just um, uh, please smile even as you share with your neighbor so that at least you look approachable. Uh, yeah? Please. So, as we, you know, as we think about this, and knowing that we are all human, we pray for things and they don't happen. We begin to start having a feeling of disappointment, a feeling of frustration, not just with ourselves, but even with God. And we begin to wonder, when is God coming through? We begin, you know, that even in my own life, there are things that I wished for. And as I grew old, I prayed for them. Sometimes they looked like they were going to happen. And then they did not happen. I remember at some point in the year 2000, I happened to win a green card. Yeah, so that sounds nice, eh? But as you can see, I'm still in Kenya. <laughs> And I actually went for the interview. And when I get to the counter, there was a slight technicality that happened. And it, it was to do with a signature. And when I was, okay, let me give you the technicality was, the green card had been applied by one of my relatives. And so when it was applied, she just signed my name. We didn't remember when the forms came that I had won, I signed my signature, the one, the Kenyan one. You know the one that you, nobody can fake it because of my money in the bank. You know the one we go like this. 
So when we got there, everything, um, all my paperwork was passed and everything. I was told, uh, uh, congratulations, go to the counter so that you can pay. When I was at the counter, I'm hearing my name being called. So I am thinking I'm being, you know, the line is being, you know, I'm being moved in front of the queue. But when I was called, I was told, we are seeing a discrepancy. And now I'm a Christian. I had just given my life to Christ in year 2000. So I was asked a question. How come there is a discrepancy between your signature? And I had to tell the truth. And I was told, as a result of that, you cannot proceed with this application because it is illegal for someone to apply for you. And I, of course, my prayer is this will be, you know, I'll do an appeal. Something will happen. Okay, even if I don't do an appeal, I will apply again and it will come. And I applied, and I applied, and I applied, and I applied, and I stopped applying because nothing came. So these things happen. And somehow we learn to manage our disappointment of God not coming through. We tuck our disappointment right somewhere in. Somewhere nobody even knows. Even when we look at you, we see you're okay. And so, we, our faith, we still have our faith and we look like everything is happening. But deep down, deep, deep inside, we know that our faith is actually damaged in that area. So if you're here and you connect with that, then you are in the right place. Because we are looking through this sermon hanging by a thread where we answer the question, when do you do, what do you do when you get to the end of your rope? So through this series, we look at, we've been looking at the Old Testament prophet, Elijah. And Elijah um, had been mentored by prophet Elijah and he seemed to be a very benevolent prophet who would actually meet with people who were in need. And last week, we were able to see him meeting a um, widow who came to him because she was at the end of her law. And we saw that there was an instruction. The situation was that the debtors had come. The instruction was, go and look for empties. And the solution was, that God filled all the empties and she was able to pay her debts. So we learned that the ritual you have could be all God needs. And so that's what we want to build on today with our sermon titled No-Go Zones. So today we meet another lady who is in a difficult uh, space, but we will learn uh, something from her story. And this story is a familiar story. And it's the story that is right next to the one we looked at last Sunday. That is 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 8 through to 17. And it is the story of the Shunammite woman. So let's read together so that we can uh, pick it uh, from there. One day, Elisha went to Shunem, and a well-to-do woman was there who urged him to stay for a meal. So whenever he came by, he stopped there to eat. She said to her husband, I know this man who often comes our way is a holy man of God. Let's make a small room on the roof and put in, put in it a bed and a table, a chair, and a lamp for him. Then he can stay there whenever he comes to us. Verse 11. One day when Elijah came, he went up to his room, lay down there. He said to his servant Gehazi, call the Shunammite. So he called her and she stood before him. Elijah said to him, tell her, you have gone to all this trouble for us. Now what can be done for you? Can we speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She replied, 
I have a home among my people. Then verse 14, what can be done for her? Elijah asked Gehazi. And Gehazi said, she has no son and her husband is old. Verse 15, then Elijah said, call her. So she called her and stood in the doorway. About this time next year, Elijah said, you'll hold a son in your arms. No, my Lord, she objected. Please, man of God, don't misread your servant. But the woman became pregnant, and the next year, about the same time, she gave birth to a son, just as Elijah had told her. Father God, we thank you for your word. May your word be praised, and even as we begin to just um, eat from this food you have prepared for us, may you be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. So again, we are going to divide this story. This is a very interesting story, but it can almost turn scandalous. Almost. So I need you to, we shall remain spiritual, in this, but it can, and I'll, I'll uh, yeah, I'm still preaching. So, allow us to walk through the situation, then we'll see the instruction, and then we'll see the outcome or the solution. So, in verse 8 of this passage, we see Elijah, and Elijah used to go to Mount Carmel for prayers. And as he walked through to Mount Carmel, he would pass by this town called Shunem. And in this Shunem, there was a what? A well to do. Did you see it was not a man? It was a woman who was well to do. So I am assuming going to Gong Hill. So this big house in Kerarapon, you see it. Now you you know, so you have been passing there, and a well to do woman. I have no idea how she came in contact with. Elisha, but we see in verse 8, she urged him to stay for a meal. Are you seeing the... So I don't know how the conversation went. The Bible does not tell us, but she was urged to stay for her. And Elisha seems to have enjoyed the meal. And it must have been a good one. Because he kept coming. Whenever he came by, he stopped there to eat. So the, the, the meal must have been good. The husband is not in the picture as yet. So I don't know whether the husband was always present or not. But what we know is that Elijah was a man of God and was going to Mount Carmel for prayers. And he seems to have met this well-to-do and is enjoying meal. So we encounter a generous family here. And we see that they are seeking to participate in ministry in some way by offering a meal to a man of God. So in verse 9, <laughs> the woman said to her husband, now you see, there must have been a budget that was put together for food every time the man of God is doing what? But now that is not enough. There are, you know, God bless wives. Because the woman said to her husband, I know this man who often comes away is a holy man. What? You know. How do you know? Oh, he has been, so how did you, have you been um, uh, chatting together? Are you on WhatsApp together? What, what is happening? I mean, how come you, you, you seem to know this is a what? We need to talk. Now, <laughs> that is not enough. I know he's a holy man. Now, let's make a small room. Where? On the roof of which house? The one in Kerarapot. Our house. Put a small room and then do what? Uh, did you realize that what comes first? You put in a what? I'm telling you this story can turn scandalous very easily. You know, but we are reading the Bible, isn't it? So put in a bed and then a what? A table, a chair, and a what? Doesn't that look like 
a serena kind of a room. You know, yeah, you know, it's, it's really nice. Everything is there. So, now it's the woman who is suggesting this. And has just come from saying, this man is very holy. So, let's make a room for him. And let's make it comfortable. You know, the man has not spoken. I'm telling you, fear women. So, so whenever he comes to us, he can stay there. That is verse 10 to 11. Then, one day, verse 12, what happens one day? Elijah came, isn't it? And then, he went up to his room. So, you know, what we find here is, Elijah is not resisting any of this. So, um, <laughs> you know, come for a meal, uh, he keeps coming, then uh, another room on top, then he keeps coming and he seems to be enjoying himself very well. Um, uh, so, this is getting a little serious, but uh, it is what happened and um, he seems to, to be enjoying. Then, what did he say to Gehazi? Call the Shunammite. And then, he called the lady, and f yeah, what is interesting here, even though the Shunammite has been called, Elisha does not seem to be speaking directly to the Shunammite. He seems to be speaking to Gehazi, and Gehazi speaks to? So, we see, Elijah says, verse 13, tell her. You see, I mean, if you have called someone and they have come, why are you telling that? 